Okay, good, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Camp Constitution breakfast here in the uh, middle of May of 2016 in beautiful Marlboro, Massachusetts. My name is Hal Shirtliff, and I am the co founder and camp director of Camp Constitution. And uh, we're going to be talking about our camp program, not just about the, camp, the summer camp program, but uh, other things that we do, as well as some of our plans and even our vision. So we'll get started. Here's our uh, camp constitution. And our motto is honoring the past. And we do that by teaching people about the marvels of our history, our godly heritage at camp, and not just at camp, but in, in, in the course of the year. Uh, preparing, uh, teaching the present, and it isn't just young people, it's people of all ages. Yes, we have parents, we have adults that come, not only to our camps, but uh, see us at homeschool shows and other venues, and we teach them as well. Because let's face it, folks, a lot of people in our generation, I'm 57, people a little bit younger than I and older know very little about our great country's history and the Constitution that made that possible. And then preparing the future. Uh, we have not done a very good job with it, folks, in our generation. Many of our children are in public schools or private schools that promote values that are contrary to what we were raised and the values that they need, especially with this thing called Common Core. It will, and we're only one generation away from losing our freedom. And people don't have any appreciation for what happened in the past, even the short, you know, the distant, uh, the close uh, past, that we are, there's, no, there's no guarantee that we're gonna maintain this freedom. And if you look at all the Bernie Sanders supporters, I think uh, that many of them are young people. But let me also say this, there's a lots of young people that love liberty, that they love their freedom. And I think people who support Bernie, because Bernie said some of the things, you know, the big corporations and all, uh, they're right on some issues. But I think the freedom of liberty, the message of liberty would resonate if they heard it. But they're not hearing that at most colleges. They're hearing the message of socialism and globalism. Okay, so uh, this is our camp photo from 2015, and uh, we had probably the biggest turnout in the, uh, the in all of the years we've had the camp. Oh, we had about 120. Now there were some people that came a little bit late uh, or left a little early, so not everybody in the photo had a camp, uh, but we had a great turnout. Um, this is our promotional one of our promotional globe brochures. Not only that, but we put this on uh, Facebook as a JPEG. You know, and we encourage people to get this out. I mean, if you have this on your, if this shows up on your Facebook page, what are you going to do with it? Put it on other Facebook pages with a little link to our website. That's how, that's how our, we, our growth. Now, our camp, um, our summer camp program has been held since the first camp in the beautiful Toanippi Christian Retreat Center in Ringe, New Hampshire, which is in the southwest corner of the state. You can go to their website. I just want to kind of show it. Some people think of camp, you know, what does that mean to most people? What it means to me, prior to coming to a camp program, and I've been involved with camps, there was a camp like this uh, prior to um, the Camp Constitution being created, but I was in the Army, so I have a different version of camp, you know? <laughs> Somebody who's a Boy Scout or a Cop Scout has a different version of camp. Some people have a bad experience with camp. Well, they think of the woods and mosquitoes and tents and rain and bugs. Well, there's a little bit of that, but this camp is, uh, you're in the woods, but you're very comfortable. We're kind of spoiled. This is the main building here where they have the cafeteria and it's air conditioned. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a movie theater, but you know, on a hot summer morning or evening, you know, the, room is, the rooms are comfortable. And uh, this is a picture of the outside uh, on the, the peak behind the main building overlooking Mount, um, Mount Wachusett. It's pretty beautiful. And this is uh, the dining facilities. And again, they have a and, uh, what's nice about our camp is that you can pr pretty much get something to eat anytime you want during the day. Wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a hungry horrors, start with the cafeteria, make yourself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or what have you. Uh, this is uh, some of the accommodations for the campers and staff. This is the, uh, where the girls stay. Uh, the rooms are very comfortable and they all have a shower. You no, know, so it's, it's not like, I remember in my uh, Army Reserve days in Mississippi, Camp Shelby, we actually had tin huts where we stayed one big fan on each side. It was 115 degrees uh, during the day, or 110 degrees. 
and you had a, you had open commodes and open showers. Not exactly the you know the best ideal situation. So that's not what our camp is like. It's comfortable. This is a brand new building, and I thought I was going to be roughing it. I didn't know what this building. Uh, a friend of mine wanted to use a. He had trouble getting around with his knees. I said, okay, I'm going to I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to give you this cabin where I love to stay, and I'll take the new building. Well, I didn't realize it, but the room I had had remote air condition. I was I had to put a blanket on because it was a little too cool in the room. You know, I said, oh, I'm spoiled here. So this is right by the pond, or the, uh, the lake here, and this is and this. In fact, this opened up last year, and we were the first group to use it. So we have a lot of accommodations, and they're comfortable. This is one of my. That's my little cabin that I had to yield to uh, to my friend there, and I, I prefer to I, I prefer the little cabin because it has more of a you know outdoor uh, camp like atmosphere. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, our first camp was held in 2009, and it was created back in 2008 in December when another organization that ran uh, had about seven or eight of these camps. Uh, the camp program was uh, was discontinued, and I called a few people that were involved with the camp in the Northeast, and they said we really don't want to uh, see this camp program end. It's just too important. And I said to people, I'm, I'm, it's really out of selfish means because I want my children to experience. Uh, what all the children had experienced. So um, that was one of the one of the reasons, but also because this is just too needed, you know. To uh, so uh, our first camp was held in 2009, and I think we may have had 60 people all together, 65 people all together. We had one big family of like 10 children, and about eight of them showed up. I said this this really made the camp. But uh, and every year we've been in, uh, incre increasing. We have families from all over the region, from Michigan. You know, there's an old saying, the church alive is worth the drive. Well, you live in Detroit, and you're driving with a, you know, with a van load of people to come to camp, and it's the highlight of their year. There must be, we must be doing something right at this camp. Uh, so Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia, New England, New Jersey. Now, we haven't had one camper from Vermont. And if you're watching this, and you live in Vermont, what's wrong with you people? You used to, you know, what, what's, what happened to the spirit of Ethan Allen, right? Um, uh, so 2011, we had close to 100, and um, and as I said, the 2015 camp we had about 120, uh, and a lot of people think of camp just for kids, you know, and the other camp program was a great program, but it was designed mainly for teenagers. So this is what would happen: Dad would come with the teenagers, but Mom was back home with the uh, little ones. So summer camp comes and the kids have a great time, but mom's home and she's not having a great time because she's got to do a lot of work. So now we say bring mom with you or bring the little ones. Three and under, bring them, bring the baby. We have rooms for you, you see. So we have to, and it's also for unaccompanied minors. And a lot of our campers will be families and uh, dad may be the counselor and he'll be with the boys or mom's with the little ones in a nice comfortable room. And she's not cooking for a whole week. And she's meeting like-minded people, ladies and making friends for life. So it's not just, a camp program, put your kid, get rid of your kids for a week. It's a whole lot more than that. Um, and the unaccompanied minors, three to seven, 13 to 17, and sometimes we say to the parents, look, how mature are they? I mean, there are 17 year olds who get homesick and they want to go home. They get 11 year old that just can't wait to have you coming back to camp. So we let them, it's their discretion. Maybe a big brother is with them, a big sister. We put them in the same room and things like that. We do our most to accommodate everybody. If they want to be in a room with somebody else, so that's uh, that's what we like to do. So um, our camp motto, I mentioned it before: honoring the past, teaching the present, preparing the future. Uh, the camp itself is an un it's uh, actually unincorporated. We're not a 501c3, but we are uh, under New Hampshire, uh, where it's considered a, a, a trust, a public trust, I think, in New Hampshire. Uh, we went a, a week long, well, actually a week and a day. And what happened was they. Um, the, the camp, you know, they have to uh, kind of fill their slots and they need to re generate revenue and that's how they do it, by having people come to camp. And they said, uh, can you cut it a day because they want to have those weekends open. That's, most of the people come on weekends. And I said, I don't want to cut the camp a day. So we added a day. And it's cost a little more, but thanks to the supporters of our camp, we were able to do that. We just raised the tuition just a small amount. Um, uh, in addition to the, um, the camp itself, we have information tables at various venues, homeschool shows, uh, county fairs, uh, and places like that. And opportunities come up all the time. We don't do a whole lot because I say we're all volunteer. 
and uh, we don't have a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of homeschool people doing a whole lot whole lot of outreach. But last year, I think we did three four homeschool shows in the region, and we did a fair a table at a county fair. Uh, let's see, uh, a publishing arm, Camp Constitution Press. If you go to our website, it will say Camp Bookstore. And uh, we, public, we, we put some things back in print that have been out of print, like the Davy Crockett story, Sock uh, We put a few other important things. We published a few books. I'll talk about the books in a few minutes. I have some illustrations of them. And we have some plans for other things uh, coming up. And we're looking for ideas, too. And we're not really trying to make a whole lot of money publishing books. We just want to get this important information out to the general public. Uh, where, you know, there, and there's a lot of things in the public domain that have been having been reprinted in hundreds of a hundred years. So we want to get that great information, especially about our Constitution. A lot of stuff is not known. Um, uh, we have a page on Scribd, Scribd.com, S-C-R-I-B-D.com. Uh, you go to that website and you put in Camp Constitution, and you'll see some of our camp newspapers over the year from over the years. You'll see our camp applications and some camp. Uh, uh, many other things, uh, some organic documents and, uh, of our nation and some important things like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. This video will be up on YouTube hopefully uh, pretty soon. We also have a Vimeo channel. And on our YouTube channel, you can actually watch a lot of our classes at camp. And it, we also have some of the fun things. Well, I think learning is fun, isn't it? So I don't want to say, oh, we, we, the, the learning isn't fun, but the other stuff is fun. Uh, we have a camper documentary they did a couple of years ago, interviews the campers and what their experience is. It's, it's very nice. And we also, in the course of the year, we might visit a historical spot. A lot of things off the beaten track type, uh, type places. And I hope you find uh, the videos interesting. Uh, one of the videos we have from one of our instructors, Mrs. Chris Ann Hall, uh, she's becoming more well known and as a result of that, we're getting a lot of views. So sometimes we might get 100 views or 20 views. Uh, also, Camp Constitution Radio, uh, which I post, and it's uh, on WBCQ, which is a shortwave station. But we also take the audio, put it into a video format, upload it on YouTube as well. And we've interviewed a lot of good people, including our instructors and people that may be instructors down the road. It's a half hour long, and it airs on a station up in Maine, WBCQ, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, every Monday. And a few other people have picked it up. There's a IPMNation.org, which runs out of uh, New Hampshire. They, they just asked if they could run it on their online service. They said, yeah, please do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> we like to think that our camp offers a life-changing experience, life-changing or definitely affirming experience. Um, and also lifelong friendships. So I don't know what the cost of that is worth. You know, and what was the old saying that an accountant knows the cost of everything but the value of nothing? So the value of this is you can't even you can't put a price tag on something like this, right? Uh, our goal is to help make constitutional activists more effective and create more constitutional activists. Because are we needed? You better believe we are because there's not enough people to know what's going on on this issue, on, on the Constitution. Um, and I tell people that Camp Constitution is the highlight of my family's year. Right? I mean, they all look forward to it, and other families have said the same thing. And I've got my little one to, uh, to affirm. In fact, it's interesting, one of the families of Michigan and Detroit, the Detroit area, they talk about it year-round, and one of the gals has a little calendar, and she marks off, you know, counts the days down. And they do skits, so we're going to do a skit for skit night, a, a campfire, you know, campfire skit or what have you. These are some of the instructors over the years. And they come here, for the most part, on a voluntary basis. Uh, we may pay some travel expenses and maybe uh, every now and then an honorary, but most of them are giving their time. Mrs. Chris Ann Hall, this would be her third year. She was, uh, 2016 would be her third year at camp. Uh, our late and dear friend Sam Blumenfeld, let me be talking more about uh, Sam and his and what we're doing with his archive and his legacy. Uh, uh, Art Horn, who's a weatherman from um, uh, Hartford, we had invited the co-founder of the Weather Channel, and he wasn't able to make it, so he, he brought his, he, he asked me to bring Art Horn. He gave a talk on global warming, phenomenal uh, presentation. Uh, let's see, uh, Dr. Mildred Jefferson, who uh, has passed away, she was the uh, 
one of the pioneers in the modern homeschool movement, the first black woman to graduate from Harvard Medical School, and we love this great lady. She passed away a few months after her appearance at camp, I think it was 2011. And we, uh, but we want to honor her memory too and let people know about her great work, uh, what she did. Uh, Dr. Michael Kaufman, who was one of the top experts on the environmental issues, the Agenda 21, he actually took the campus on a little nature hike. It was very interesting because the Toa Nippi, it's thick, thickly wooded where they didn't do some cutting for, you know, for the things they needed. And you see these stone walls going into this thick forest. And he says, now why would you build a stone wall in a thick forest? Of all the stupid things to do you know, in, uh, in the country. And it, you know, I don't know, he said, because 100 years ago, this was all clear cut. This was all farmland. And he said, most of New England has been reforested. And you know why that was able? Because of the green technology at the time, coal and oil and gas. Because we don't have to chop trees down to, to heat our homes as much as we used to, right? And it's really interesting. And then he'll say, well, they had a clear cut in the area to build a uh, basketball court. And he says, see this area? See how quickly it reclaims itself. It's reclaimed itself within a matter of less than a year. And the kind of plants, you know, the pioneer plants, the sumacs and all that. It was a great little, uh, a conservative nature hike, you know. Um, anyway, so also uh, we've had state uh, elected officials. We've had uh, Dan Itza, Norman Tregenza, who was actually, is our now our, our sort of co-program uh, director. Uh, who was a, he was a former state, uh, uh, Bob Kingsbury, a highly decorated World War II veteran. Uh, he's since passed away as well. Uh, we, uh, we actually published his 30-page uh, letter to a professor, a history professor, about his experiences you know, right after the Battle of the Bulge, uh, serving in the General Patton. It's called, um, what's the little book, what's the book called? Uh, General Patton's... Um, the Ghost. No, no, it was, um, he was a scout, a scout for General Patton, yeah. And that's available not only on Amazon, but it's also available on... Um, scout for Patton. Scout for Patton, yes, thank you. Yeah, and uh, so that's, uh, that's an incredible story. And uh, Garrett Neer, the Patriot Pastor, he won't be here this year, but he's been there since our, the, our first camp in 2009. Uh, last year, we, the last couple of years, we actually did musket training with his uh, firing uh, uh, musket. It was great. Uh, Reverend Stevie Kraft, uh, he is a very dynamic minister. He lives in New Jersey. He's lived in the New York City area. Uh, you will not forget, <coughs> and you won't fall asleep in one of his classes, I tell you. He's a very phenomenal uh, uh, teacher and instructor and has a great love. And he comes up with his wife, Edith. And Edith runs uh, what we call the Patriot Camp. She runs the program for the ones children be between 5 and, and 10. And they have a great time doing like that. Uh, Karen Whalen, uh, she was uh, one of the Minute, minute Men or Minute Women uh, participants at the Mexican border uh, back, you know, five, maybe 10 years ago. She shared her experiences. Uh, Fred Pullman, she was an Uncle Sam reenactor. I got a picture, I'll show you a picture of Fred. Uh, Tom Moore, who uh, is a local historian, uh, sort of a New England, specializes in colonial history. Uh, he'll give a, he's been on our camp as an instructor. He'll be there again. Uh, Ron Pike, who not only is our camp choir director, but he and his dad are scientists, and they signed that, that petition uh, that there is no man-made global warming. There's all about 35,000 U.S. scientists, and you have to have a science degree, and it has to be a hard science not political science or film science, you know, uh, film critic, criticizing science, you know, but a real hard, or psychology, psychology, but real, a real hard scientist, right? And he'll be giving a class this year on the global warming issue. Uh, and our young people are being inundated with this stuff. Inundated. Elementary school. And it's outright propaganda because there's not another position allowed. So we give, and we say to our, we say to the, uh, the campers, do your own research. Don't take our word for it. You see what we presented. Look at look at the facts yourselves. That's what we have to offer. Um, uh, Jim Perloff, who's been over the years, he wrote incredible some incredible books. He wrote a book called Shadows of Power about the Council on Foreign Relations. He also wrote a book called uh, Tornado Throw Junkyard on the creation versus evolution evolution issue. If you're in a public school, you'll be told that evolution is a fact that we, we evolved. We came from slime and evolved from monkeys. So why are we surprised when children act like uh, monkeys, right? And uh, so, and, and he takes it, he takes it, what he does is he refutes the, the bad science behind the, uh, behind, behind the evolutionists. Um, let's see what else. We have uh, Pastor Scott Lively, who wrote the Pink Swastika. He was, he was an instructor a few years ago. 
Uh, Dan McGonagall, he offered a, uh, uh, he's here to, he's here to autograph, you want his autograph, you have, to, you have to pay him $25 and we take 10% as a donation. Uh, he, he's an author, he'll be giving instruction this year, and, uh, and we also, we, we're not going to be around forever. I hope I get another 30, 40 years, I don't know. But we want the young people coming up to teach classes, that's what it's about, because it's, it's their camp. They're going to be running, they're going to be taking it over. So we encourage that, and we'll have one of our young campers who will be now a junior counselor doing a history class on the American War for Independence. I don't know how you can do the whole thing in 50 minutes, but he's going to try. So, so this is uh, two of our instructors, Earl Wallace, the gentleman on the left. He wrote a book called The Three, uh, the uh, one, uh, one Dimensional Leader. And uh, our Uncle Sam impersonator, Fred Polnich, who uh, actually, he looks, he almost looks like a th four-dimensional figure, you know, <laughs> with his Uncle Sam outfit. A few years ago, we actually made a few field trips to the Uncle Sam's boyhood home, and incidentally, Uncle Sam is a real person, Uncle Sam Wilson, and we've become good friends of the owner of the house, and he comes all the way from California just to open it up for us, so uh, he knows how important this is. Uh, this is just something, oh, t I didn't mention Tom DeWeese, who was another instructor. He was here last year. Tom is perhaps the top expert on Agenda 21 in the world. And, and we try to redeem the time as much as possible. Tom got a chance to speak to a Republican club in uh, J Ridge, New Hampshire, just down the road from our camp. And Chris Ann Hall, and Chris Ann, she's going to be doing two uh, talks outside of camp. So we want to maximize, uh, you know, their, not to bring them up to keep them at camp all week long, but the opportunities should be speaking to a group in Range and a group in Milford, New Hampshire that week. And then there's a picture of my good dear friend, Reverend Stevie Kraft, on the right. Uh, uh, informational classes taught by authors, legislators, leaders of patriotic organizations. Uh, authors include Sam Blumenfeld, Earl Wallace, James Perloff, Jen Coffey, a former state rep of New Hampshire, who actually stopped the Real ID Act in the state, which led to other states to follow suit. Um, Fred Polnitz, Reverend Stevie Crabb, Chris Ann Hall, Tom Dewey, so I did mention them after all. Uh, Dr. Michael Kaufman, Garrett Lear, Art Horn, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now these are some of the classes, and we don't want to teach the same exact class every year the same way. That's why we like to have different instructors that do classes. We have to stick with the basics, and we do have different levels. We have the, the, the junior camp, we call, the, we call it the Patriot Camp for the little ones. And then we have the intermediate level. They may be learning about this stuff for the first time. So we're going to have the basics uh, on the Constitution. We have to do that every year. Uh, then we have some advanced classes. And some of the campers will be together, obviously, depending on the class. So here's just an example. America's Godly Heritage. And we are non-denominational. We are, we could say we're Christian-centered or Christ-centered, but we're not sponsored by any particular church or any particular the theological position. We believe that rights come from God that we have an obligation to serve God, uh, but we have people from, we have Protestants, Catholics, and we get along just fine, and it's, it's a great program. Uh, we learn about not just the U.S. Constitution, but state constitutions. How many people even know we have a state constitution? So, uh, exposing Agenda 21 in the United Nations. We had a great, right in the range, New Hampshire, our influence was able to help kick out Agenda 21. So our influence goes on beyond, a little bit beyond just the confines of that, uh, that beautiful camp. Uh, morality and freedom, and that's sort of Reverend Kraft's uh, major focus. Without morality, you can't be free. And how do we know that? Just look, look around. <laughs> look around these, uh, these states and, and, and towns and cities where they don't have a lot of morality. And, uh, and we quote from our founding fathers. Tom, uh, George Washington, in his farewell address, talked about how important uh, religious virtues were. John Adams. He said, he, in a letter he wrote to militia officers in Massachusetts, he said uh, that uh, our Constitution was written for a moral and a religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the governors of any other. And we think we can solve the problem by adding new amendments. That's going to solve the problem, right? I wish it were the case. Let's have an amendment that says you have to be moral. <laughs> that will work, right? Then we'll be all set. Then we can go home and be safe and have another 500 years of freedom and liberty, right? Uh, the Midnight Rider, Paul Revere, and then what we do is usually the day later, uh, this year, we're going to actually be following the, the, some of that Paul Revere's ride. We're going to be going to Lexington and Concord for a field trip. Uh, uh, what is money? Now, economics should be one of the most boring topics for anybody, children and adults. 
but that's not the way we present it. And we make it real because why should a 50-year-old care about economics? Well, you work, you're going to get a job, aren't you? They're going to tax you, aren't you? You see what that, you know, I tell people when I was a child, uh, candy was a nickel. But why is that a buck fifty? Because it's better now? Well, it's usually smaller than it was once. So they have to understand what made that happen. And so we'll show actually what real money is. Uh, so when, I, when I teach the class, uh, I usually, I'll have a silver dollar and drop it, you know, a real silver dollar. And I say, you hear that? Yeah, we heard that. Now, here's a dollar bill, and I drop it. Did you hear that? I said, no, it didn't make a sound, did it, right? But you, that's why they call it sound money. If dropping it makes a sound. Uh, also, uh, the conspiracy. Now, we don't engage in kooky theories and alien shapeshifters that have reptilian backgrounds, but we look at folks who are pushing something they call the New World Order, and we just quote from them and make a case. And you don't have to agree. But you say, things don't happen by accident. Things are planned. Yes, there are accidents, and sometimes the enemy takes advantage of these accidents, you know, to justify more government control. So we talk about certain groups and what we need to do to help expose them in our own circles. And I think the book, Shadows of Power, we highly recommend that. Uh, the right to keep and bear arms. Leadership. You can have all the knowledge in the world. There's an old saying, you'd be the smartest person in the concentration camp, right? I told you this was going to happen. I told you, I told you, I told you. You wouldn't listen to me. So we need leadership in order to make an impact, not just in your community, where you work, where you go to school. And I tell you, we've seen something like this. One young, this is an interesting anecdote. One of our young campers learned all about Uncle Sam. Been to the Uncle Sam house, got the little booklet. He's in school, and uh, the teacher said, uh, well, there was, Uncle Sam wasn't a real person. Uh, teach, <laughs> you know, uh, yes, he was. No, 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 that's a myth, that's a myth. And he says, well, he, he looks at his little cell phone on the internet, oh my goodness, you're right. How did you know that? <laughs> I learned it at Camp Constitution, right? And he actually got a, a good, good grade for that. They actually it, it suggested, since he's been involved in our camp, and his grandfather said, he wasn't a great student, but he's learning some good. We're doing something right, because he's, he's one of the top, you know, top, uh, top students there on that class. How to be a constitutional activist. And one of the things we do is take some of the campers out around the community and distribute constitutions and other things that are important issue on issue related items. Uh, another class is constitutional state militias versus national guard. That's sort of an advanced class that our my good friend Dan McGonagall teaches. And a timeline of U.S. history. You know, to me, I I tell people did George Washington and Abraham Lincoln know each other? And there are some people who don't know because they don't know the timeline. You know, when I was when I was learning the Bible, my my brain works. I need to know the time. What did Moses live around the time that uh, King Nebuchadnezzar? So it made it easier for me to understand the Bible if I knew who lived when and what times. And I think it's vitally important that you know this. That's important. And I think it makes it easy to learn history. So so we do that. We do that. Uh, we're always adding things. Sometimes people recommend things. We actually have workshops too. And I had a. A state rep come up to me and he said, uh, do you do any kind of acting classes? You know, you do acting to do, I, I said, you know, we actually did film a skit one year, uh, but maybe it's something we can, we can add on. That's something, you know, do an acting class and make videos promoting liberty. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, so uh, some, some of the activity outside of the, the uh, educational aspect of it, we have chess tournaments, those are for the nerds. And we have plenty of nerds, and you don't have to be a gifted athlete to come to Camp Constitution. Uh, basketball, volleyball, softball, wiffle ball. I love wiffle ball. That's my favorite thing. You know what's interesting? When I first started going to camps in 1990, everybody brought their glove with them. By 2000, only a few did. Something's happened, you know. <laughs> Not as many people, but anyway, we have a lot of fun playing the wiffle ball and softball. Indoor rock climbing all at our camp in Toanippi. Canoeing, hiking, fishing, uh, swimming. Ballroom dancing. That was something that some of the campers wanted to do last year. And it was such a nice thing to see teenagers. Now, we have a rule that you, boys and girls can't hold hands or touch or what have you. But we made an exception. We asked our head counselor. I said, it's, his, it's up to him. And yeah, we could do yeah, ballroom dancing. And there was my son, you know, doing the ballroom dancing with this nice young lady. And I said, she is, who would have thought, you know, on a hot summer afternoon that they prefer to go indoors and do some ballroom dance? It was an optional thing. So I was very impressed with that. Uh, we have a camp newspaper that comes out every night, 
and campers participate. They might write articles, they report on an event. They may not want to play the basketball game, but they can report on the tournament, the basketball game, what have you. Uh, and every evening, we have a campfire. Now, we have staff with years of experience. So you say, I mean, if I wasn't going to come to camp and I was looking into a camp, I say, well, okay, they say it's a great camp. What do I, what do I know about these people? Well, uh, first up, a lot of, almost all of us are parents, and our children come to camp, a good percentage, maybe more than half. So that right there and there, I think, is, is a good guideline, right? Uh, I've been involved in camp since 1990, uh, 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 like this, so I have a little bit of experience, uh, and this, not just uh, in the aspect of it, but also some of the challenges we may face, like homesickness and things of that nature. Uh, we have a program director, uh, who actually two people working now, that, that make sure we have a great full program and lots of good instruction and good material. And we do have a lot of handouts that people bring home with them. A head counselor uh, that is a, a father and a granddad, and he's been involved with camps for over 30 years, and he's still a very youthful, early 60s. And he, you know, he, has a, he, he runs a tight ship. In other words, there's discipline, but there's fun. Without the discipline, there's no fun. You know, it, it will be, it will be a free for all. So we keep things, they know, the campus know what they can't do. They know, they know, you know, how long it far you push the envelope, and they and they expect that, and and because of that, they have a whole lot of fun because they know and they know it's expected of them. Uh, our counselors, uh, some of them are new to the uh, to the camp, some of them uh, have been involved for many many years, and some of them are parents, or most of them are parents. Uh, we have a nurse, a doctor, and a lifeguard. Now we're only required to have one medical person. Uh, the EMT is a basic thing, but I think last year we had three people and some of them come in with their own families have a great time and we have a lifeguard he's one of our campers he's a certified lifeguard uh, we have a recreational director to make sure that uh, they're having a lot of uh, having a lot of fun and getting some good exercise this is what a daily schedule looks like 6 30 in the morning is the optional run or swim i usually do the run and the swim uh, and i tell you i'm 57 and i still can probably outrun most of these young whippersnappers <laughs> at least the ones that come out I'm not going to be able to say that much longer. One year, uh, this young man was challenging me. For the first two mornings, we raced. It was two miles. And, you know, I think I was probably late 40s. Two miles racing every morning. And the first time I beat him, the second time he beat me by a few steps, and he thought he had just won the marathon or a gold medal. He was so excited. I beat Mr. Shirtliff. The third day, I said, look, we're going to kill ourselves. Let's just r run the last day. We'll race the last day. The last day he beat me by a good 10 yards, and boy, he, but it was good. He, he never used to run before, but he came to camp to challenge himself, right? And I thought that was a dumb idea for me to do that. You know, what was I thinking, right? Uh, but wake up is at 7 o'clock, uh, and when we, we wake up, we go to the flagpole every morning where we do a prayer. The campus will do a prayer and a devotion from the Bible. We raise the flag and salute the flag, and we usually recite the preamble of the Constitution as well. So we, we memorize the Constitution. And before breakfast uh, and before first class, the campus will go back to the rooms and cabins to make the room uh, presentable for our daily inspection. And it's not just an inspection for cleanliness, which we, we, we insist upon, but also for a Christian or patriotic theme. And they're, they're, uh, every day they're in the, on the camp newspaper, there's uh, the results of that. And the best cabin or room at the end of the week gets free pizza on people last day, pizza night, right? And I tell you, I think some of these campers spend more money on decorations than the pizza. Ten times what the pizza's worth, right? But they have a lot of fun doing it. And every day it gets a little better, and it's just incredible that the, that the um, imagination of some of these campers uh, staff. Uh, and then, uh, of course, breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. If we have three classes. Room inspection is why the first class is going on. Three classes of 50 minutes in the morning, plenty of time in between for breaks. We insist on no more than 50 minutes. But we tell instructors, do you want to cut it back five or ten? You know, if you run on the material, and don't just say stuff for another ten minutes. Give them a little, let them run off and, and stretch their legs. So, uh, new, lunch is at noontime, and from one o'clock to about two, two thirty, we have we'll organized activities, tug of war, wiffle ball, all kinds of fun stuff. And then after that, they have a lot of free time to, you know, they, they have all the recreational opportunities. The lake would be open, canoeing, hiking, what they can catch up on their sleep. I know that. I need to do that sometimes, so I might take a little. We, in the army, used to say, "I'm not, I'm not sleeping. I'm checking my eyes for pinholes." See, that's what we tell them. Uh, and then, uh, and then we have uh, dinner at 5:30. Another class at 6:30. We have a flag lowering, 
at uh, 720. Well, actually, campus will learn how to fold the flag and all that uh, flag etiquette. Uh, and the last class would be at 730. And then we have campfire at 9. And it's interesting, too. We don't have blaring rock music at campfire. The campers don't walk around with their cell phones, you know, texting and dilly and dallying with their tweeting and twittering. Uh, the counselors will take the cell phones during the day. No, they can call mom and dad, you know, between classes or what have you, but they're not texting in class. And for somehow they survive. <laughs> they're able to survive a whole week with all these gadgets, right? And so, uh, you know, campfire. And we, so we'll sing from the campfire songbook some of these some hymns, some corny old camp songs. We'll do skits, recite poetry. Uh, and within the, fir the first day for the new campers, they said, this is a, what's this stuff going on in? But by the last day, they say, can you expand campfire another half hour? Because they love it so much, right? Uh, bring your flashlight and your mosquito repellent, by the way. If you come in on campfire, you're gonna need it. Uh, we always have a late night snack in the cafeteria. That's where we distribute the camp newspaper. Lights, uh, back in cabinets at 10.30 and lights out. That's more of a theory, right, uh, young Ian, at 11. Because we want you to have eight hours sleep. If we tell people, we, if we close the, um, if we say lights out at 11 and they're in their rooms, uh, everything else is up to them. You know? But we actually, we, we, like I say, it's well supervised. Um, this uh, Tuesday, we have an optional field trip to Mount Monadnock. See, originally we started doing this, we, we get to tire the campers out. You take them up to the top of the hill, but guess what? We get tired out too. So, but I usually go on the hike uh, and I look forward to it, although halfway up I'm saying, what was I thinking? <laughs> By the time I get down, I said, boy, that was a good experience. It was rewarding. And uh, Wednesday at camp is an all-day field trip. So we'll have, uh, we'll have our, our breakfast, and we'll rent a bus or two buses if we need, and we'll go down to, we're going to be going to Lexington Green, the Monroe Tavern. But by the way, we're not going to be drinking at the Monroe Tavern. It's a historic spot. Uh, but you parents are concerned about that. And the Hancock Clark House, the home of John Hancock's wife and father-in-law, uh, and also Concord Bridge. We'll try to get as much in as we can. We'll have a box launch that day. That means there's three classes you, that you don't get. Uh, and, but in the evening, we come back, stop for ice cream, and uh, we'll also uh, have two classes that evening. We may be able to visit the grave site of one of the Minutemen, Prince Estabrook, who was a slave. He got us freedom eventually. He was one of the Lexington Minutemen. Um, and we may have an optional field trip Thursday. I haven't quite decided yet to be someplace local. And Saturday in the morning, some of us will go out and uh, we may have an information table in front of the post office. You know, fill out our questionnaire, a 10 question quiz, get a copy of the Constitution. We'll see. Or we just distribute Constitution. We go into the businesses. Now, let me ask you folks when was the last time a young person came to your house and offered you a Constitution? Think about that. But we do it every year, and you imagine the impact that an adult has when a couple of young people said, "Here's some." And it's sometimes we give a little camp flyer about what we're about. They have to be impressed by that. Now the challenge is just get these campers to do it during the whole year <laughs> to influence not just a camp but on a regular basis, right? Um, Saturday night we have our we'll, we'll have our uh, final exam. And, oh, I meant, which I forgot to mention, in the, the first day we do a uh, entrance exam, and it's just to see what level you are. Now, there are some 11-year-olders whose parents uh, teach this all the time, and they do very well, and there's some older children, that, uh, teenagers, that they may not be getting this at the house as much as they should. They may not do so well, but usually by the end of the, the week, somebody who scores a 20 on the entrance exam ends up with an 80 or a 90. That means they're learning something. I mean, if you score a 10, on the entrance exam. You can do that just by you know picking and choosing. And you score a 60, when you leave a 60 is not a great grade, but for a whole week you're learning a whole lot. And most schools don't give quizzes the first week, never mind final. So so it's not so much what did you score, what did you learn? But it also tells us, are we doing the job right? You know, I mean, so sometimes you say, gee, the teacher student didn't do so well, whose fault is it? Oh, it's the student's fault, or it's the parent's fault. In most cases, it's the teacher's fault. If these poor kids have to be drugged down uh, because they can't pay attention, and I don't blame them in these public schools, you know, that's the teachers. They're doing something wrong, right? So, uh, and the Patriot Camp, as I mentioned earlier, is for the young. It's not as intensive. Uh, they do some singing in the morning. We'll have Earl Wallace, uh, 
and they'll do they'll they'll, they'll learn about our, our country's history. They do they'll put up we have the colonial costumes for them, and, and they even have a little parade. They do the flag raising, so it's it's a lot of fun. And uh, we had uh, was it two years ago, Mrs. Chris Ann Hall's boy came. I don't think she quite knew you know what that he was an eight or nine, and he was sort of hanging out with 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 Chris Ann as she's giving the class. I said we have a program, you know. And about an hour later, he's dressed up with a coin outfit, and he didn't want to leave camp. <laughs> he just didn't want to leave. He had such a great time. Yeah. So uh, this is our picture of our musket training. There's a young lady. Uh, actually, we met this young lady at a homeschool show. We had a we had a, a, a drawing for a free week, and she came with her mom. And I think she plans to be here this year. Uh, I think Nancy Seely actually uh, the pistol pack and mom. I did some musket uh, fired the musket as well. Right. This is the top of Mount Monadnock. And uh, what a beautiful, what a beautiful day. I think it was a couple, a couple years old. And it's a challenge to get at the top in a certain amount of time, and it's a, a rewarding challenge, too. Uh, this is campfire. Every night we have, we do this um, little campfire. So you know, we ask campers, what's your best part of camp? A lot of them say campfire. None of them say going home. <laughs> None of them say going home. Um, this is our lake, and we have to camp all to ourselves. Uh, there may be an occasional visitor, but we, and, and even the surrounding area, we've never seen anyone else. And so we have, there's a one or two cabins that are still privately owned. But I think the camp is buying them as well. So we have a place to ourselves, and it's a beautiful place. We say polar bear swim. Let's face it, July in New Hampshire, the water's not too terribly cold. It's not like uh, Old Orchard Beach, you know, so it's, 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 it's comfortable. Uh, the, not a great picture here, but uh, we have our morning inspection. And uh, this is this is a sign. They're learning. Uh, it says uh, you can't come in without a warrant. You know, they're learning about the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, right? <laughs> and uh, and some of the different displays we have. I think the girls do a much better job than boys when it comes to room inspection. What do you think? Uh, no. Do you think the boys are better? Oh yeah. Really? You got most points last year. Sometimes I need candy for the inspectors, you know, enjoy, you know. That doesn't work with me. I look for cleanliness. I'm, the, I'm an army guy, you know. I get my white glove. I'm looking for dust, and I'm looking to make sure the shoes are under the under the ta under the the, the uh, beds with, uh, tied up. I don't want to see uh, any any trash cans full. But some other people look for creativity. But I like your cleanliness. Uh, over the years, we've done field trips. Uh, we, we every year. And I just reviewed some of them. Uh, Concord, Lexington. We're going back there. We haven't been back there for a few years. Uh, Uncle Sam House. That was an optional field trip. Uh, Concord Historical Society in Concord, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, Franklin. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Concord, Massachusetts. That's where you have a Paul Revere bell on display. Franklin Pierce Home. It's about a half an hour from Camp. One of our presidents who was from New Hampshire. Uh, Hike up Mount Monadnock. Ridge Historical Society where we, I, we got some important resources from them, which I won't go into now, but it was a great, great little place. A lot, of, a lot of museums, rightfully so, everything's behind glass. You can't really touch it, you know, because it will be degrading. It will degrade itself. You touch uh, an old document. But some of these small historical museums, now this one at Ringe, it was a discharge form signed by George Washington. And here's a musket by the guy that served under him, and you can hold that if you want, you know. It's pretty interesting. Pretty, I was in a museum in Cape Cod recently. I was doing a little, thanks to, uh, Chris Ann Hall motivated me to do a little documentary on Mercy uh, War, uh, Warren Otis. And I found a document that Sam Adams signed. It wasn't the Constitution, Declaration of Independence. It was, uh, he was promoting a militia officer. And it was, you know, covered, but I held it right in my hands. I thought it was so neat, you know. The Winget and Historical Society, Louisa May Alcott's home, who is from Concord, Massachusetts. Bunker Hill and Old Ironsides, that was uh, two years ago. And it was a little because we want we had to get back to camp at a certain time. We had beat that rush hour traffic, but we made it, right? Uh, tea Party Museum last year, and we dumped tea in the harbor, or not real tea. You know, it was a great place to do it. I was so impressed. In fact, a lot of the people there for the first time couldn't believe how well done a job they do there. So I recommend folks, if you're in Boston, please take that in. It's a little pricey. Thanks to Tom Moore, our great historian and negotiator, he got the price down for the group, got good group rates. We also have to taken trips to the state houses, and usually we'll have a tour of an, we'll have a tour of the state house, and we'll have an elected official give a little presentation. Last year it was a Massachusetts state rep. Yeah, we found a conservative state rep in Massachusetts. Can you believe that? Uh, so this is just, and boy, this is just one week in a day, folks, and we're doing all this. It's a full week. Uh, so between the camps, YouTube channel. And please go to our channel 
The information is for you to share. That's why there's a little button that says share. It means you share, not just me. <laughs> so please, uh, uh, Facebook page. On our Facebook page, we'll have the, uh, the, uh, the event of the camp. Uh, this event was posted on there, the homeschool shows, uh, things come up during the year, information, not just about camp itself, but other issues. And please, if you're, not on, if you're on Facebook, like our page, and then let other people know about it. Um, camp Constitution Radio, we've been doing this show for since January of 2015, half an hour a week. Uh, and I actually found someone who listens. I was in Albany, New York, uh, early this week. And this guy said, oh, I listen to you on the radio, you know. Oh, great. Uh, we have two listeners that I know of for sure, you know. But it also gives me an opportunity to introduce our camp to some of the guests who might know much about it. And uh, so a lot of our instructors are, uh, are also on, uh, on the show. And we put this up on YouTube, usually a few days or a week later, so you can see here what we have. And the, uh, the man who owns the station is a friend, and uh, they're listed as a camp sponsor. His late wife was a big supporter of our camp. Um, information tables, I mentioned earlier, at, at one of the interesting things too, uh, we'll have a 10 question quiz. And we ask people if, uh, on the Constitution. Uh, Dr. Cashot, by the way, took it, he got, I think he got a 90. <laughs> he, got, he did well. And he's from India, originally. They know more about the Constitution than <laughs> most Americans, right? In fact, uh, uh, the man who owns the Uncle Sam house had a cute little story. He said uh, there was an immigration officer. He grabbed some Hispanics at the, at the border and said, you're illegal aid. No, no, we're American. We're born and raised, you know, we're Mexican, but we're from, born and raised in Texas. He said, he said, uh, who is Uncle Sam? We have no idea. You're Americans. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we have a website. And we have a blog on our website. And I have a little note here. It says, uh, looking for writers. You can't pay anything, but it's very rewarding. Uh, a blog is a great resource. The more articles that we write, the more traffic we get to our website, and the more people want to know about our camp. So how come we don't have more people writing? If you want to write an article, send me an article. Just email it to me. You don't have to post it and all that. See, I could do all that. Um, in fact, we're going to be posting your article you did on the, uh, on the, on the opioid issue about 10 years ago. Um, and you young people too. Uh, we want campers to write articles for, uh, and it could be a movie that you watched. You know, it doesn't have to be just about the Constitution. It could be a cultural thing. You know, um, and this is something that we're very, very proud of: the Sam Blumenfeld Archives. Um, I could spend an hour or more talking about this, but Sam is, was one of the pioneers in the homeschool, the modern homeschool movement. He authored, I don't know, about 15 books on education. He was a fixture at homeschool shows. He taught three generations how to read phonetically. And he did a whole lot more than that. And uh, Bill and McNally and I were very close friends of uh, Sam. And before he passed away, he asked us to take possession of his library and his papers, because he knew that we weren't. And he said, sell some of the things, you know, put the money to the camp, he said. Uh, but we said, this man's life should be known for generations. So uh, uh, thanks to Bill and his wife, who let us post some of the stuff in his bar, in his garage. We had over 200 boxes. I had some in my barn, but my barn is uh, getting a little too full. I have a small barn in the city. It's not one of these big old barns, you know. That's what I really need. Uh, but I bet you within a couple of years, I'd fill that baby up too with stuff. Uh, but we, six months, we went through it, fine to some of the stuff, you know, we had to get rid of it. An old phone bill, uh, a Time magazine issue, you know, uh, throw that away. But there were a lot of letters. There was about 200 audios presentations he gave at homeschool shows and other venues are all 50 states. About 170 of those are already available on our website in audio format and video. And well, actually, we need some help. I want to take all those audios and put them on YouTube. I can't do it. I mean, I, did, I could do a few at a time, but I need help with people to do that because that stuff has to be up on YouTube as well so more people see it. Um, and even the videos, we've got to get some of the videos. A lot of them are, we need to get more. All of his newsletters that he did for about 12 years, monthly newsletters, are on that website. Uh, but the most important thing is this Alpha Phonics. I should have brought a copy with me. Uh, the Alpha Phonics was uh, the little workbook he used, that we used, to teach how people how to read, mostly children. And 128 lessons, in addition to the speeches he gave, 128 lessons in this, are in, and that was Bill McNally's doing mainly, 
audio and video. So you can actually use our website to teach people how to read. Free of charge. See, and uh, there's a lot of correspondence Sam had. I mean, Sam knew uh, some great people. He had uh, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, and uh, people like that. So you really get to know this great man by looking at the works. And it's, we still have a lot more to do. I'd say we're about 75% there, Bill, what do you think? But still a lot more to do. And that was thanks to one of our, the man who's going to be running our camp newspaper this year, Mark Affleck, down in Pennsylvania. Well, he comes up to camp. He won't be running the newspaper from Pennsylvania. He'll be running at camp. But he loves doing this, and he's, been a, he's, he's the one that made this. I said, I just want stuff on my script, our script page. He said, let's put it on here. Let's go. I said, man, go for it, right? That's why we need people with talent and ideas, because I don't have a lot of talent, and I have some ideas, but we need other ideas as well. Um, let's see. Almost done. Yeah, this is uh, a table at our homeschool show, and that's Dr. Kishore <laughs> and his new friend, uh, Mandy. The camp mannequin. We all have a, we, we have the camp mannequin, and we say, "Don't be a dummy. Come to come to Camp Constitution." <laughs> uh, this is something we published. This is the Mayflower Compact that we make available. I mean, it's, uh, so we have it in a nice little frameable format. Uh, this is the logo for the radio station WBCQ. The, I like saying WBCQ the Planet. Like the whole world is listening, right? I like to say that. Uh, this is the uh, little promotional flyer in, uh, in JPEG we created to promote Sam Blumenfeld's uh, archives. And I think this little picture of Sam, a little show, I think that is the world should remember him that way. His, uh, his uncles, he liked to be, he's, he was an affectionate uncle. So you think of uh, Sam teaching these young people how to read. And now these people are probably adults now, and they've taught their children how to read the same way they learned. They're highly literate as a result. And I was very pleased that Sam was able to have a good friendship with Dr. Kishore uh, prior to uh, Sam's passing because the drug issue, that children can't read. When they get older, they can't get a job. They, they a sense of hopelessness, so they end up selling drugs. They get into the drug culture. So it was, I think, an important, and we're going to be doing a lot more with Dr. Kishore and his important work, too. There's something called the Davy Crockett story, Sock Dollager, which we, it's, a, it's a free market classic. In fact, someone told me that the term sockdologer was used by actors before they actually went on stage until the, uh, the Lincoln assassination. And now they use the term break a leg. And that, you know, because Wilkes jumped in and think he sprained his leg or something like that. Kind of an interesting factoid. This is a book that we co authored, uh, co published with Jen Coffey, Nine Slips to Liberty, uh, Republics and Democracies. This is a great essay by Robert Welch from the early 60s, pointing out the difference and that we are a republic, and it's a big difference between the two. Yeah, we're not a democracy, but most people out there, some of you listening, unless you're in the freedom movement, you were told we're a democracy. And you see our leaders, Republican and Democrat, we're a democracy, democracy. You know, I've heard a great illustration between one of our, instructor, one of our instructors, John McManus. He said, uh, what's the difference between a uh, democracy and a, and a republic? It's like the difference between a chair and an electric chair. You know? <laughs> Um, uh, this is something we published, the Family Heritage Series. It was a series of newsletters that went out once a week, designed to be read at the dinner table in the early 70s. And the author was an instructor at camp, Sally Humphreys. That's um, Pat Humphreys' mother, who's a Tea Party uh, leader here in the Boston area. And uh, we just we printed the things dealt with the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. The best article in there is uh, they signed for us and what happened to some of the signers. You know, some of them didn't live much longer, some of them lost all their possessions and property and what have you. And this are two books that we published. This was something, Gems from the Gem Years, a, a dear friend of mine, she's in her 90s. She was the founder of Guardians of Education Maine, along with Charlotte Isabel. And uh, so we, we, we published uh, her, uh, her book, and she gave us the rights to it. No, we're not making much money on it, or any money, but we want to make it available. But she said, you know, whatever you want to do with it, and this is a book by Dan McGon, who executes the laws to restore the republic, dealing with the uh, constitutional militia. Uh, so this is um, plans, goals, and vision. Now, a vision is a plan without money, right? A plan is something you probably can do with a little bit of time, but um, in goal, a goal is something that we hope we'll, we'll achieve. Uh, first, we have to strengthen um, our camp program, um, get more people out there, more people involved, more sponsors, and what have you. Start other camp constitutions. And we, they don't even have to be necessarily under our banner. We can be just advisors. 
and we've had people different parts of the country we need something like that out here I said well let's make it happen okay um, worked with those who want to start similar programs in their areas how about operate a year-round program that'd be nice that's a vision right now that's not a goal that's a vision how about have we have our own facility preferably in New England could be anywhere wouldn't be nice to have a, a place like this we can have our we don't have to rent out a hotel. We can just simply have it right at our place, right? We have a couple of year-round residents, you know, and uh, we even have a small staff. We would, uh, well, I would get ahead of myself, uh, a full-time director. Uh, and that full-time director and anyone else will be visiting the homeschool circuit. There's hundreds of homeschool shows around the country. You can't visit them all, but that's our target market. Those are the people that would love a camp program, you see. Uh, so, let's see, here we go. Uh, so, if you're interested in starting a camp or watching this on, on YouTube or Vimeo or anywhere else, you have to have commitment. Oh, you, we should have one here. Yeah, okay. What are you going to do about it? Well, let someone else do it. Well, they're not. You just said you want one. Let's make it happen, right? Location. You've got to find a place that will meet your needs. <clears throat> That's why a little bit of advice from us will say, well, you need a, it needs to hold so many people, you should be able to have it to yourselves, and so forth and so on. It could be just a weekend event. It doesn't have to be a week-long camp, and then it's, the diff it's a little different. You don't need a full-time lifeguard in some states. You may not need a camp doctor, but you should. Insurance, you've got to be able to cover. The camp we have has our own policy, so we have another policy on top of that. And it's not that expensive to insure a whole camp. It's less than $500, but we wouldn't have camp without it. So. And of course, most of the people that come to camp have some type of insurance, right? Startup funds, three to five thousand. That would be for a website. That would be, uh, you know, to get some promotional materials for the camp program. Uh, maybe you got to pay some travel expenses if you're going to get a, a future instructor. But you know, you don't have to go that far for for good instructors. Most of them, you probably have them right within a within a driving distance of your camp. You know, we like to bring in featured instructors. But we could do it with our just in-house while doing that. Uh, website, promotional brochures, uh, and we will help in any way we can. We will help. Um, we'll be there. Some of our staff will be there. And so what can you do? Promote the camp program. Well, how do you do that? Well, get other people to see this video. Right? Talk about it. Uh, copy and po uh, paste this event. Go to a website and let people know about that website. Let people know about what we do at camp. Uh, talk to and then um, become a camp sponsor and we have a sponsors page if you go to our website where you see uh, where you see uh, businesses and we're able to we tell people that we've never turned away a worthy camper or a family for lack of money we do that because of our camp sponsors and if we had more camp sponsors let me say well why can't we have a second week we can now, I'm only on like so many, you know, vacation time, so I can't run the second week. I might help start it, then go home, rest up, pop up for a day or so. But we can do that if you want to, but you have to help in that. Uh, so we always say, offer your talent, time, and treasure. You may be a good speaker. You may, and you may know people. Maybe you can't be a sponsor, but you know people have businesses that like what we do. Let us know about them. Let them know about us. And um, let's keep the campfires going. At, at Camp Constitution. And at this point, I want to invite, uh, he's going to give a little testimonial. One of our campers, I tease people, I say, before he came to Camp Constitution, he had long hair, tattoos, and what have you. He did. He's a clean cut young man, and he's going to give a little uh, to Ian Smith. He lives in the Fitchburg, Massachusetts. He and his family, siblings, have been regular campers, so Ian's going to come up and uh, for a little bit and give a little, a little plug for the camp. Been going to camp since 2010, so that's what six years. Um, I've always had a good experience, and I love coming back. That's one of the best things you know I can say about the camp. It's, it's just great. Um, like so, at the camp, you know, we go for a week. We have a lot of fun activities. Um, so, like volleyball, we have volleyball tournaments, hiking. Mount Mananak, we have foosball, chess tournaments. Um, so it's a lot of fun hanging out with everybody. Um, 
you know, just there's a lot of free time that we have, and um, it's just it's great to see everybody that you haven't seen in about like a year. So you haven't talked with them, you know, you're able to talk with them. It's a lot of fun. Um, the campfire is one of my most memorable uh, experiences. You know, every night campfire is just you sing songs, you have skits, you participate, each cabin does something, and that's a lot of fun. Um, you can actually, like, I mean, if you're, like, when I was first going to camp, I was kind of shy about it, but, you know, after a time, I got into the skits myself, and that was, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, Camp newspaper. I like to talk about that because it's really cool um, being able to put something into a little publication, I guess you could call it, for the camp. Um, writing a couple different articles that um, you know other people can enjoy, you know, and then just um, as Mr. Sherlock was said, talking about the cab cabin inspections. Um, those things are a lot of fun to read. We have jokes in the camp newspapers, puzzles, games. Um, and then the cabin inspections themselves, you know, you read them and there are a lot of comical remarks, humorous, you know, it, it focuses on the things that we did in the cabins, whether we did it well or not. Um, and then we get points, we build up those points by the end of the the week, but you know, all throughout the week, after each campfire, we get the newspaper and we look at the points that we get, and we try to compare them with uh, previous points, see how much we got. Um, and, you know, we try to compete with each other, but you know, it's all fun. It's all fun, and you know, it's great because you know, you're gonna, you know, you're having a lot of fun doing it with other people. You're not just competing because you know you want to compete. Um, and then, you know, the goal is to get the free pizza. So, you know, we want to get the, the best decorated cabin, the cleanest cabin. Um, uh, the most important thing about the, the camp, though, is the classes themselves. The classes are very informative, and having all the different speakers there is just great, because you know, have, we have uh, Chris Ann Hall. She's fantastic. She's great with history. Um, you know, you have Reverend Kraft, he's a very enthusiastic Protestant minister, so that's that's something to look forward to every single time. Um, and, you know, all the other camp instructors, they're great. They really are informative. They help a lot with my understanding of the Constitution and how the government and the country should be run, you know? And that's something that's really important. And I think I'm going to take a lot of that even more so as I grow up. Um, but all in all, it's really great attending this camp. I have a lot of fun. Um, it's fantastic. And you know, at the end of the camp, each week we have a, um, a dinner where we all dress up. And then after which, we do the concluding ceremonies. And that's when everybody gets awarded a little certificate. Um, and then we also have the Super Camper Award for the best camper. And that's a lot of fun to see who gets that. Um, we also have a counselor award for the best counselor. And um, that's just something to look forward to at the end of the week. You know, something nice to conclude the whole week by. And, you know, it makes everything, it ends it on a nice note, very nice note. Um, but then, you know, you leave, you're sad. But you can always come back next year, and that's you always look forward to the next year, so it's awesome. Okay, uh, I'll, uh, we're, almost, we're almost done with the program, but I, uh, my good dear friend of mine, Richard Saran, I've known Rich, uh, oh, I don't know, since the early 90s when uh, Rich and I knew each other through Dr. Mildred Jefferson. We were both her, uh, her drivers at some point in, in our lives. That's something that I really treasure, the memories. I didn't drive her a whole lot, 
uh, we went at her wake or her memorial service. It was really a lot of, uh, well, it was a reunion of her drivers. And one dear man said, uh, we asked, how far did you drive Dr. Jefferson? I drove to St. Louis from Boston and back. I said, I think you get the, you get the prize for the most. Uh, so Rich uh, came to camp last year and I think spent a day or half a day or a whole day. And he's going to read a letter uh, about his experiences. So come on up there, Rich. Thanks very much, Hal. It was a great pleasure to be a guest for a day at Camp Constitution in Bridge, New Hampshire at the Telenippi Christian Retreat Center. And uh, I'd like to share a memory with you about uh, that uh, day I had there. I call it a Camp, Camp Constitution moment. It was Thursday, July 16th, 2015, at the close of an eventful day, I was a guest at Camp Constitution, and so far there had been games and contests, a great lunch, and a whole lot more. At this particular moment, however, I found myself treading uncertainly along the shore of motionless Peck Pond as my sneakers slowly bogged down into mushy wet sand. The windless sky was fading into deeper and deeper twilight here on the outskirts of Ringe, New Hampshire. I looked up at the ragged tree line, girdling the pond and was treated to a grand vision in the sky. A crescent moon had risen and was standing scimitar-like in the sky with a brilliant diamond balanced just above its tip. Astronomy buffs would later inform me that this astral conjunction of the crescent moon and the planet Venus takes place only once every 850 years. I lowered my eyes to scan the mirror image of this striking rarity on the blue-black waters at my feet. The sweet scent of pine smoke hung in the air. Ahead of me, along the shore, flames from a big bonfire shimmied and danced in my watery mirror. I could just make out that encircling the flames was a ring of bright young faces. Here were the youthful members of Camp Constitution, healthy, clean, cheerful, good-looking American kids, and they were smiling and singing. In my mind, I whispered, if all of America's young people looked like this, we would have no cause to fear for the future. I felt contentment in this moment despite my, by now, dampening uh, feet. So, I had seldom seen a finer sight than the one now before me. Eventually, the time came for me to slowly withdraw back along the shoreline into the fading light, for I knew that I could never completely be part of what I was witnessing and that the future belongs to our young. Thus ended my one day at Camp Constitution, a day that I will hold in my heart forever. I ask all of you to come on up to Camp Constitution this summer. Take a look. I think you'll like what you see. I found my Camp Constitution on that special evening. Come up and find your Camp Constitution. Thank you very kindly. And this is uh, one of the reasons why we like people to actually experience it, because you can, talk, you can hear about it, you can read about it, you can watch the videos, but no, how can you make an impression like that without being there? Good job. So uh, thank you, uh, Rich, and thank you, Ian. And folks, please help our camp program, make it successful, let it grow. God bless you for coming here. God bless uh, those who will be watching this. And 
uh, please get a hold of us. Go right to our website, campconstitution.net, and uh, uh, we want to hear from you. So thank you and God bless. And see you at camp. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. I want to sign up for the Rock Climb.